Hi, this is Derek Jordan. Welcome to the World Fusion Show, where we bring you the leading innovators in World Fusion music. Today, my guest is Aliyah Saikon, composer, oud player, arranger, uh, piano player, and singer-songwriter. Welcome, Aliyah, to the World Fusion Show. Hello, thank you for having me. Thanks so much for coming. Um, so, uh, just tell us a little bit about your background, where you grew up, and how you got started. Well, um, it's a little bit of a of a long story because there's just so many pieces that form together. But in short, I grew up in Amherst, Amherst area, Massachusetts, um, to a family who loves travel and loves helping people around the world. So I was brought up with a lot of influence of different world music and mm. kind of different cultures in my house and going places. So that really was part of my upbringing. Um, so my love for world music, particularly Arabic music, doesn't come from my actual own heritage mm. being that part of the world, but more just from an influence as I grew up. Right. Um, I played piano from a very young age and studied classical ballet, actually. Mm. Um, and I just always was composing. I was just always composing. I couldn't, I couldn't stick to a page. I just always wanted to create my own thing. And around, you know, if we fast forward really far, um, through high school, was studying a lot of jazz, a lot of improvisation, which informed my composition and informed what my listening was to mm. different music. And then once I got to 17, 18 year old, uh, years old, that's when I discovered the oud, mm. um, or the oud, as you would say in Arabic. And um, I discovered that in, in, a, in a trip to the West Bank, to Ramallah, mm. in Palestine, and was just forever changed. So now my music really looks like me mostly playing oud, and then using my piano background and my composition background and my arranging skills that I learned at Berklee College of Music. Mm. Great and that's school. what we have now. Where did you study piano? Um, I started taking private lessons from a local teacher named Katrin Iselin. Um, and then, you know, throughout my high school years, studied with different people. But um, the first two years of Berkeley, I was really intensely studying jazz piano mm. Um, mm. with a lot of different renowned teachers. So Yeah. That's tremendous. That's really great. Um, so um, I think it'll be nice to go to the first video okay. and hear some of your music. So do you want to tell us a little bit about this, Al Mukatel? Yeah, so um, Al Mukatel is Arabic for the fighter. Mm. Um, and the piece, actually, I started it as a piano piece. When I was first listening to Arabic music, and I was still mostly using the piano as my composing tool, um, I composed this piece, which for me was very inspired by mm. everything I was listening to, which you'll hear. And over time, I adapted the piece to have more of an oud-centric melody. And I have, you know, I formed a band in 2014 called Aaliyah Saikon Project. And this piece was one of the first pieces we played. And then it later became the music video that you're about okay. to see. Oh, wonderful. So uh, why don't we go to the video and, and check this out? All right, now. let's do it.
right. That's really great. I love that. Thank you. So nice. So what attracts you to Arabic music? <sighs> That's a hard question to answer because I don't know if I really have words for it. But mm. um, the first time I ever heard Arabic music was um, through dance, actually. And I had a ballet teacher who introduced, you know, who in introduced this piece to us that we were going to dance to. And um, I don't know, I just felt so drawn to it and so like I wanted to learn more and hear more. So she happened to have a small library of Arabic music artists. So she gave me her CDs and I listened to them and I just couldn't stop. And then, you know, when I went to the West Bank, that was about a year later, I, you know, I ate it up. I mean, it was all around me and I just, I don't know, it felt deeper to me than studying jazz, which is purely subjective, of course. Mm -hmm. But for me, it just wells up from a, a long, deep cultural tradition. Not that jazz doesn't, but I just felt that my study of jazz at Berkeley was very cerebral and um, just didn't connect deeply with who I was. And mm -hmm. when I was hearing Arabic music, um, so much of it is learning by ear. So much of it is drawing from these deep traditions and drawing from poetry and um, ornamentation, you know, it's just, it just is a soul music. It is. Form. I agree with you. And it has a real wonderful, mysterious quality yeah. that I like a lot. Now, well, mysterious to us as Westerners, well, you whatever, know. Maybe not, maybe to them too, who yeah. knows. But, um, but I agree with you with that sort of deep soul tugging thing that yeah. happens. So did you, um, in Berkeley, you studied with Simon Shaheen, right? Mm -hmm. And tell us about what that was like. Cause I think he's fantastic. Yeah, so one of Simone's albums, Turath, was one of the earliest CDs that I had mentioned before that I got to listen to. And so I'd, or, that was sort of a name in my mind from the very outset of my studying Arabic music. So when I learned that he was beginning to, he had just started teaching at Berkeley. Mm. Um, and he really joined as violin faculty because along with being an ode, virtuoso he's a violin virtuoso plays both very well yes. hardcore yeah <laughs> so he joined really as that and then as as palestinian particularly but as arab students were filled like you know funneling into berkeley he was training them on whatever instruments they had because mm. he was kind of the only one well there was another christian karam who's also amazing but mm. he was really like the pillar of that traditional arabic music um presence at berkeley so when i got there and got to study with him He's, he's a really fantastic teacher. He reminded me a lot of the, my ballet conservatory days because he's not, he doesn't sugarcoat anything for you. Mm -hmm. And he will just be very honest and very direct about what you're lacking and what you need to progress on. And so he, it, for the first time in my life, I became a really, really dedicated practicer mm -hmm. because he was very harsh in yeah. a good way. And it made me the oud player that I am now and that I'm, you know, it's given me the tools to continue progressing. That's great. Yeah. So you're also a singer songwriter and you have a beautiful voice okay. and we're going to go hear one of your songs in a minute or two, but I wanted you to tell me, I know sometimes you like to put real messages into your songs. So tell me a little about that. Yeah. So like if I were to, you know, put in order all the different hats that I wear, Singer songwriter wouldn't really be at the top of the list because really composition and arrangement and oud playing um, have been my focuses. But every now and then I'll just feel like I just have something I want to say, a message that I want to impart musically. So I, you know, I, I don't tend to write a lot of love songs or mm -hmm. you know songs about those kind of things. Not because I don't want to, but because I don't feel like I have much to say on those topics to add to the wealth of things that are being said on those topics. But sometimes I'll just feel this deep inspiration, um, particularly about um, refugee Palestine or um, spiritual messages that I just want to put to music. And then I end up drawing more from um, my background as a piano player and mm -hmm. that more just Western diatonic thing. And then as the song develops, then I end up kind of implementing these different idiomatic things from Arabic music and otherwise. Mm -hmm. So it ends up mixing together. But yeah, um, it, it, it's rare. I'll write a song very rarely, and when I do, it's because I really have something powerful that I would, I would like to share. Right, and we're gonna watch House on the Stone, which is a new video for you. Um, do you wanna talk about what that's about or yeah. set it up for us? Sure, so House on the Stone um, as, is actually the single off of my newest album called Prayer, and it, it came to me, so actually the chorus is based off of a verse out of the book of Matthew, chapter 7, in the mm -hmm. Bible. 
and I, as I was reading it, um, it just, it was like the music came to life as I was reading the words, just the way they're written. And the rain fell and the wind blew and the flood came and beat on the house. And I was just immediately impacted by that. Mm -hmm. And it was during a time of huge transition in my life, making changes to move to LA, um, making changes all throughout my life. And I was inspired by that lyric, or I guess that verse, because it is about not being rocked by the storms that come into life. Mm -hmm. But I released the song, so the song kind of took that on. And then I released the song as a message of hope for hurricane victims mm -hmm. or hurricane flood, earthquake, you name it, because it's about weathering a storm, whether metaphorically or physically. Right. So it actually ended up working out very well. Well, it is very timely, I have to say, with yeah. what's going on right now. So let's go take a look and listen to this beautiful song. Thank you. <laughs> well, it, it kind of came out of left field. I grew up, um, Tony Vaca is a close family friend. I grew up listening to his music, seeing him live. And he always kind of was this mentor um, figure to me in the music industry. Mm. My parents aren't professional musicians. They're very musical, but they're not professional musicians. So Tony ended up being kind of this like musical father figure in my life, particularly around playing international music. Mm -hmm. um, so... I think, I don't really remember whose idea it was, but it just occurred to both of us at some point, like, Aaliyah, you should come to Senegal with us. Um, and I don't really know. It just happened. It was a beautiful, beautiful trip. Um, it really opened me up to stretch a little bit outside of the traditional Arabic music sphere um, and not necessarily to strive to sound traditional, but actually to strive to kind of touch people of all different types of, you know, backgrounds. So being in Senegal with my Arabic instrument and then bringing my voice into it and then drawing inspiration from the people I was playing with, Baru Sal, um, Bakan Yang, Bidou Boubes. I mean, it was like, it was a lot, I have to say, it was a lot of inspiration and stimulus in a very compact two weeks amount of time. Nice. It took me a long time to like process everything that came to me during that time and I still am yeah but it's been amazing I understand I've been there twice with Tony and both times were amazing yeah really great I'd love to go to the next video this is a live one uh, a song of yours called Heartbeat where you're working and it shows off some of your arranging skills because yeah. you're working with a larger group um, four string players etc can we go that right to that video now thanks <laughs>
Yeah, terrific. That's really great. <laughs> yeah. Showing off a little of your dance moves there, too. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I'm smiling so big because that was like one of the best days of my life. That was at the Green River Festival. Nice. The first festival I've ever played, and uh, it was such a dream come true. And I just want to say that that particular instrumentation with the string group and the horns mm -hmm. and the big rhythm section, including the drums, um, like Western drum kit, is what is my on my new album. Right. So hence the kind of showing off the arranging chops. Yeah. Got a string section and it just like has all these different layers going on. So yeah, that's I love great. It. Yeah. So you're about to move into a new chapter of your life. You're yep. going to be moving to LA, right? Yes, I am. What's, what's what are you thinking? What are you feeling? I just well, I always wanted to move to New York. Actually, I lived there before and I loved it. And it's very me. I'm a I'm a Northeast girl at the end of the day. I'm West East Coast girl. So I and I always had this sort of vendetta in my mind against LA. I just thought it wouldn't really be the place for me. But then I went there to play at NAM, uh, National Association of Music Manufacturers, which is this huge, huge um, conference and, and expo for music gear, basically. And I was invited by Godin Guitars, which is one of my sponsors, um, to perform on the Electric Oud, which you just saw. And it gave me a chance. That was in LA. So it gave me a chance to explore the city. And I realized... There's so much collaboration going on there. There's so not that New York or other places don't have it, but I just felt a lot of like open doors and a lot of opportunity to push my own boundaries and expand and collaborate with people I wouldn't otherwise work with. Yeah. And I just feel like now's the time to take a leap of faith and spread my wings and go try out living in a city and performing in a city um, that is just so different to what I'm used to. So that's great. Well, good luck thank you. for that. Also, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us today on the World Fusion Show and you. sharing your beautiful music with us. It's really been my great pleasure to have you here thank today. You. And we're going to go, as we usually do, at the end of the show and do some live playing together. Yeah, which I can't I'm wait. really looking forward to. Um, so um, I just want to say this is Derek Jordan. Thank you for joining us today on the World Fusion Show. Um, and hey, remember, think globally, listen locally, and support independent music. Mm -hmm.